chapter 1, verse 6. Guide us to the straight path. This is a supplication asking Allah, the exalted, to guide one down the path which is pleasing to him namely, Islam. This path has also been mentioned in another verse of the Holy Quran. Chapter 4 and Nisa, verse 69. And whoever obeys Allah and the Messenger, those will be with the ones upon whom Allah has bestowed favor of the prophets, the steadfast affirmers of truth, the martyrs and the righteous, and excellent are those as companions. This path is none other than the way of the Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him. All other paths to Allah, the exalted, are closed except his path. In fact, the forgiveness and love of Allah, the exalted, is not possible to obtain without following the way of the Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him. Chapter 3 Ali Imran, verse 31. Say, O Muhammad, if you should love Allah, then follow me. So Allah will love you and forgive you your sins. And Allah is forgiving and merciful. It is important to note, in order to follow someone down a path one must first obtain knowledge of the guide's journey, for example which direction they are traveling in. Without this information it is not possible to follow them. Similarly, one can only follow the path of the Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, after obtaining knowledge and acting on his traditions. It is the reason why obtaining this type of beneficial knowledge has been made a duty on all Muslims. This is confirmed in a narration found in Sunan ibn Imajah, number 224. This verse encompasses three requests. The first is for Allah, the Exalted, to show one the correct path. The second is for Allah, the Exalted, to provide them with the strength to journey down the path. And finally, it requests the protection of Allah, the Exalted, from straying off the path after setting down it. All three are important as one may discover the path but not journey down it. The one who journeys down it may eventually stray from it. Only the person who fulfills all three elements, through the mercy of Allah, the Exalted, will obtain success in both this world and the next. This verse also reminds Muslims not to become proud of any success they achieve as it is clear that this is only possible through the guidance and mercy of Allah, the Exalted. This guidance is needed with every breath as it only takes one moment to fall into perdition. This is why it is important to recite this chapter and specifically this verse often. In fact, the Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him has declared the prayer to be defective if chapter 1 al-Fatihu is not recited in it. This is confirmed in a narration found in Sahih Bukhari, number 756, chapter 3 Ali Imran, verse 8. Who say, Our Lord, let not our hearts deviate after you have guided us, and grant us from yourself mercy. Indeed, you are the bestower. The straight path is sincerely obeying Allah the exalted, by fulfilling his commands, refraining from his prohibitions and by facing destiny with patience. The one who strays off this straight path through disobedience must swiftly sincerely repent and rejoin the righteous on their journey towards the presence of Allah, the exalted, in the everlasting abode of peace and comfort. Chapter 54 al kamar verse 55. In a seat of honor near a sovereign, perfect in ability. In addition, this verse indicates the greatest thing which one should seek help from Mala, the Exalted, for which has been mentioned in the previous verse. Chapter 1 Al-Fatiha, verse 5. And you we ask for help. This should remind Muslims that the very purpose of them being on earth is to find and practically journey down the straight path in order to reach Allah, the Exalted, in the hereafter safely. The Holy Quran and the traditions of the Holy Prophet Muhammad, Peace and blessings be upon him. Teach mankind the simple way of achieving this namely, using the blessings and resources they have been provided in ways pleasing to Allah, the exalted. Whoever does this has found and is journeying down the straight path. In reality, in most cases nothing in this material world in itself is good or bad, such as wealth. What makes a thing good or bad is the way it is used. It is important to understand that the very purpose of everything which was created by Allah, the Exalted, was for it to be used correctly according to the teachings of Islam. When something is not used correctly it in reality becomes useless, 
For example, wealth is useful in both worlds when it is used correctly such as being spent on the necessities of a person and their dependents, but it can become useless and even a curse for its bearer if it is not used correctly, such as being hoarded or spent on sinful things. Simply hoarding wealth causes wealth to lose value. How can paper and metal coins one tucks away be useful? In this respect, there is no difference between a blank piece of paper and a note of money. It is only useful when it is used correctly. So if a Muslim desires all their worldly possessions to become a blessing for them in both worlds all they have to do is use them correctly according to the teachings found in the Holy Quran and the traditions of the Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him. But if they use them incorrectly then the same blessing will become a burden and curse for them in both worlds. It is as simple as that. In addition, this verse indicates the greatest thing which one should seek help from Allah, the exalted, for which has been mentioned in the previous verse. Chapter 1 Al-Fatiha, verse 5. And you we ask for help. This should remind Muslims that the very purpose of them being on earth is to find and practically journey down the straight path in order to reach Allah, the exalted, in the hereafter safely. The Holy Quran and the traditions of the Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, teach mankind the simple way of achieving this namely, using the blessings and resources they have been provided in ways pleasing to Allah, the exalted. Whoever does this has found and is journeying down the straight path. One can adopt the correct attitude when they understand the purpose of these blessings. Every worldly blessing a Muslim possesses is only a means which should aid them in reaching the hereafter safely, it is not an end in itself. For example, wealth is a means one should use in order to obey Allah, the exalted, by fulfilling the commands of Allah, the exalted, fulfilling their necessities and the necessities of their dependents. It is not an end or an ultimate goal in itself. This not only aids a Muslim in maintaining their focus on the hereafter but it also aids them whenever they lose worldly blessings. When a Muslim treats each worldly blessing, such as a child, as a means to please Allah, the exalted, and reach the hereafter safely then losing it will not have such a detrimental impact on them. They may become sad, which is an acceptable emotion, but they will not become grieved which leads to impatience and other mental problems, such as depression. This is because they firmly believe the worldly blessing they possessed was only a means so losing it does not cause a loss in the ultimate goal namely, paradise, the loss of which is disastrous. Therefore, still possessing and concentrating on the ultimate goal will prevent them from becoming grieved. In addition, they will understand that just like the thing they lost was only a means they firmly believe they will be provided with another means to reach and fulfill their ultimate goal by Allah, the exalted. This will also prevent them from grieving. Whereas, the one who believes their worldly blessing is the end instead of a means will experience severe grief when losing it as their whole purpose and objective has been lost. This grief will lead to depression and other mental issues. To conclude, Muslims should treat each blessing they possess as a means to reach the hereafter safely not as an end in itself. This is how one can possess things without being possessed by them. This is how they can keep worldly things in their hands and not in their hearts.